So I'm going to be talking about some um, solutions to um, some small chess variants and um, how they would could be applied to some larger games. So uh, this is, believe it or not, the smallest uh, chess variant. Um, it has just four pieces on a 2x3 board. And um, if you imagine trying to play Western chess on 2x3, you're not going to get very far. The kings would barely be able to move. So obviously there's some... Uh, there's some um, additional rules to make the game interesting. So, as I said, just four pieces on two by three. Uh, it's um, there's yeah. The interesting thing is there's white's king and there's black's king, and you're trying to checkmate each other. But there's some shared pieces. Uh, basically, when it's white's turn, the wind and the storm general will be white's pieces, and vice versa. And um, there's some special rules for how check and checkmate are delivered. I'll show an example game. Um, I probably won't get into the exact rules, but uh, you'll get the idea. Each piece um, rotates as well as moving. So um, as you can see, the pieces are in a pointed direction because the way they point actually affects how they move as well. And um, the kings can actually reside next to each other. So if you tried to play Western chess on 2 by 3 your kings won't be able to move. Um, very well so they, they made an exception they can be next to each other as long as they're not facing each other so um, I actually have the pieces here so your kings can't be facing like this so they can't be pointing at each other so um, there's also um, well this is common for all versions of Japanese chess but the captured um, pieces can be dropped back on a later move the difference um, is that for Gafu Shogi, um, just like the pieces on the board, the capture pieces are also shared. So either side can drop regardless of who captured the piece. So it's a common pool of pieces. So an example game I have, um, it starts out as an empty board. All four pieces are in hand. So the players start by dropping um, their king pieces, and then they drop the um, shared pieces. So, so this is fine because, um, as I said, they're not pointing at each other and um, so every time one of the pieces makes a move um, it rotates by 90 degrees so um, here's a move that's just a rotation on its own and um, here's a capture so um, the storm general captures the wind general and it moves into the reserve and it ro rotates 90 degrees don't worry about the exact um, d different ways it can move it's I'm just trying to show what the um, nature of the game is um, so um, another game I studied is um, Nana Shogi, and this is played on a 3x3 board and this is actually closer to um, conventional Shogi so you have three pieces of the king and the rook and the bishop and each piece um, has four values um, so it changes every time uh, and conventional Shogi? 9x9 nine nine. Okay. and um, Shogi is similar to Western chess, except that um, the pieces that are captured can be dropped back onto the board by the person making the capture. So the interesting thing is that the pieces never diminish off of the board. So um, it has a very um, interesting endgame because it's not like chess where your endgame becomes like queen versus king. and So you have a chess table that you can look up. So it's very interesting. Um, so initially when... Um, this author designed the game. He made the rook a long-ranged piece. Um, the problem is he realized after playing it with some of the viewers on his website that it was too powerful because the board was only three by three, and if you had a long-range rook, it could move almost anywhere. So. So this was invented recently. Um, late nineties. <laughs> yeah. Shogi, I assume, is ancient. Ancient, yeah. Are... Yeah. So the the was the the, the Gaku Shogi was also. Yeah, nineties. Okay. Yeah. Um, it was mostly um, as an attempt to uh, make to see how small we can make shogi and still make it interesting. So there are additional rules to make it interesting. Otherwise, it would just be you know easily solved. So um, the, initially, the rook was long range, but the author revised it so that it only moved one space in one of the four orthogonal directions. And um, just like in conventional shogi, the capture pieces reverse side and they can be dropped onto the board later. I'll show an example. Um, so, like Gafu Shogi, all the pieces are um, held in hand at the beginning of the game. 
you start by dropping the kings. Um, in Nano Shogi, the kings actually do behave like Shogi kings. They can't be next to each other. So, um, drop kings. So, um, when you drop one of the um, non-king pieces, it can be dropped in either of four values. So the rook also has um, other values associated with it. Um, this is called, I believe, the, the wing piece. And it has certain movement. Um, I don't remember the movement myself, but uh, it's. Um, I just want to show the nature of the game so I can talk about solving it. And um, in Nano Shogi, every time a piece moves, the value changes. So here, the bishop is capturing this, which is a cat. And it's changes to um, it changes value um, every time it makes a move and here the rook moves to capture and it changes to um, I believe that's the go between and it has a different type of move so um, when computer scientists talk about the complexity of a game what they usually refer to is the state space complexity, which is the number of legal positions, you can reduce that by symmetry because um, some of the pieces um, have a symmetric way of move, so you can reduce that by symmetry. Number of legal positions a game has. So, for example, tic tac toe has about 700 positions. Um, chess has about 10 to the 47 positions, and Gafu and Nano Shogi are in between. Gafu Shogi is about 100 times more complex than tic tac toe, and Nano show we somewhat more complex than that. There's three types of solutions people usually talk about when they talk about solving a game. So a strong solution is um, you know the best move for every position, even ones at which one or both of the opponents have made a bad move so far. So tic-tac-toe is one of those examples. Given a position, we know what the best move is, what the value of this position is, who's going to win the best um, if both players play the best moves from here on in. Um, and um, the weak solution is uh, the winning strategy for one or the other player is known. Sorry about the typo. This is the weak solution. So it's really about mapping that whole space that you've had on the previous slide. Yes. Um, for a strong solution, you would map every position to um, where it goes next so you know the value. For a um, weak solution, usually what happens is you start at the root, and um, it's basically a giant um, alpha beta pruning search. But the other nodes you might not get to because it's pruned out. Um, ultra weak solution is you know the result of a perfect game starting from the beginning, but it's non-constructive, so you don't know um, what the moves are. You just know the result of it. Um, so for example, in the game of Go, for example, you know that black can't lose because if white has a winning strategy, black can just pass his first move because pass is a legal move and go. So this is non-constructive. It doesn't tell you what black should do on the first turn. All it does say is that black can't lose. So we solve Nana and Gafu Shogi strongly where we find the best move for every position. Who's we? You personally or the Shogi community? Me. Yeah. Me. Okay. So um, I'll show how I do that. So first, um, what I've done is um, generated all of the positions. So um, one way to do that is to start at the beginning. And it's basically brute force. Death for search. We store all the positions um, in a hash table. And we backtrack when it reappears. So that will generate all the positions. Um, and then we find all of the checkmates and the winning um, positions and mark it as such. So as it turns out, for Gafu Shogi, um, I mentioned there are 52,000 or so um, positions. turns out that about 5,700 of them are um, checkmates. So we just mark that, okay, this position, white wins, this one, black wins. And we mark all that. And then we work backwards. So if there's a move that leads to a win in X moves, then you can win in X plus 1 moves, because you make that one move, and then you, and then you um, win in X moves, basically. And if all of your moves lead to a loss in at most Y moves, then you lose in Y plus 1 moves, because you make that best move that delays the loss by the longest, and then you lose in Y moves. So we repeat this process of looping through all the positions and updating based on the information we have so far until no more positions um, can be updated based on this rule. And the re remaining positions would be drawn because it doesn't lead to any of these checkmates. 
so the best um uh, um if both if both players um play correctly, the players will repeat positions in all the remaining. And that's because you can put pieces back on the board. Yes. So that's why you can get into cycles. Like you can't couldn't get into cycles of chess. Yes, you can. You, you could just go back and forth. Yeah. Um, but this is more common. Player. Yeah, this is more common. Yeah. Um, and the result is actually quite interesting because the position on the left. Black can win in 55 moves, which is a lot. Um, in 3x3 three three chess, the most complex um, game has a, um, a win in 31 moves. So 2x3 Gafu Shogi is actually more complex than 3x3 three three chess because of the new rules we introduced. Um, and some st in the interesting stat is on this one. On the bottom axis, I have how many moves um, left to win in an optimal play. And... Um, on this axis, I have how many positions we have um, into in um, for where um, it takes that many moves to win. And as you can see, this is a log scale. So um, as you can see, almost all of the positions reside in the very left here, where we're mate in five or six or seven. And there's only a very few number of interesting positions. And um, as it turns out, um, Nano Shogi um, is drawn. Um, in an old version of Nano Shogi, where there were long range pieces, black can actually win. Um, so um, the author was correct in projecting that um, the powerful pieces um, dominated the board. Um, black basically wins because he drops the rook first and it has that long range. So, um, And it turns out some positions can take 135 moves uh, for a force checkmate. And even 3x4 chess has the longest force move of 85 moves. And 4x4 is unsolved. And actually, there are some 4x4 chess games that are interesting. I think it's called micro chess, where there's just one row of pieces. And there's actually some interesting strategy involved. Um, but it's unsolved for now. Forgot to write it, but um, Gafu Shogi is actually a win for the uh, first player. But it takes uh, 37 moves. Oh, actually, uh, 37 moves to... Uh, to win from the beginning. So I'm sorry, that means that there's a best move starting from the first one. Yeah, that leads to a win in 37. And it's guaranteed that you can get there? Yes. If you play all those moves. 37 or less. If your opponent makes a mistake, it could be less. Yeah, but best moves. Um, so the, the trans, um, translation of those results is that despite the small size, um, Gafu and Nano Shogi can still be fun to play. I'll give a link to my uh, games uh, at the end of the talk. So um, the conclusion I came to was that the extra rules, rotation, shared pieces, promotion, and such kind of make up for the small size of the game. And another conclusion I came to is even though the vast majority of positions are uninteresting, like i.e. they can be solved in relatively few number of moves, there are a small number of very interesting positions taking 50 or more moves to win, and we suspect that might be true um, for Western chess. So there might be, um, for example, a position where you can checkmate in a thousand moves. That would be very interesting if they came up with that. Um, but the vast majority of them, if it's a mate, it's probably going to be short. Usually, if you ever done chess puzzles, it's made in 13 at most. You know, it's not going to be made in thousands and thousands of moves. But I suspect they exist, given what I've seen in these two results. Um, and interestingly, there's also a one-dimensional chess, and um, clearly it has even more unconventional rules to make up for that fact. Unfortunately, um, the size of that board is relatively large. Um, it's, um, I think, either 17 or 21, depending on the variation. Um, so um, it's the size of the board that really makes things complex to solve because of the number, number of legal positions you have, the state space complexity we talked about earlier. Um, but hopefully it can develop some strategy. Um, and some back of the envelope calculation why I don't think um, we can um, strongly solve Western chess. Let's assume that you stored every game position on one atom of aluminum. I'm just using aluminum as an example. You can use um, some other element if you're interested. So that's 10 to the 47 atoms of aluminum. And at room temperature and pressure, um, that equals a sphere of radius 735 kilometers which is one-third the radius of the planet of Mercury 
And let's assume that you construct that. For some weird reason, you construct that. Um, it would take light about 0 0.0025 seconds to travel that distance, which is millions of clock cycles. So forget about your really fast computers, um, because just the, the 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 speed limit going through that cube is going to be enormous. So um, if you multiply that by the number of positions, that's 7.7 .7 times 10 to the 36 years. So um, unless we somehow um, come up with some way to collapse x time to np, we can't collapse it to p, obviously, because of the polynomial hierarchy. Um, it's unlikely for chess to be strongly solved. If we collapse it down to np, maybe we can use some clever sat solver technique or something, but I don't see that happening. Um, in practice, usually um, you can solve games with like billions of positions. Even trillions is kind of pushing it. Usually they have to um, <laughs> distribute the work out. Um, so um, here is my uh, site. You can play some of the smallest games of uh, Nano and Gafu Shogi. Um, I have to warn you, the computer plays perfectly on those games. <laughs> <laughs> and um, some other small variants. Um, there's the Botsu Shogi, Micro Shogi, Mini Shogi. Um, these ones don't have the unconventional rules of the rotating. So maybe if you understand Shogi, you should be able to play those three variants at Which least. Which of these have you invented? None. <laughs> I'm working on it though because I think that um, if you um, make a three-dimensional game that has eight spaces, two by two by two, and you use some of those unconventional rules, you can probably blow up the um, number of um, moves you need in, in order to checkmate. And that'd be interesting. I, I just think that to have such a small game where you have a mate in 100 or 200 or 300, I just think that'd be interesting. It'd um, be a nice puzzle, a brain teaser, or um, maybe some way to challenge you know, some of these computations and see how far we can push it. Um, I have Reversi, which is also known as Othello, um, International Droughts, um, Checkers. Um, more games to come in the near future, so you want to bookmark that site. Questions? Um, I just had an idea, but I'll give it to you instead of doing it because it seems like you'd have more fun than me. Um, if you created a, gen a genetic algorithm wherein the genome defined the rules for peace movement and, and the board dimension and stuff like that. And the fitness function was the length of, of the, the longest minimum chain for, for a forced win by either player. And you just had that thing evolve a game that was more and more and more interesting to see what would come out. I think that that would possibly produce some very fascinating results um, and possibly games that are only playable by computers against each other. Um, <laughs> And then I have a question as well. What kinds of rules do the pieces have on the uh, mono-axis board you showed us? Um, what kinds of move rules do those pieces have? Some of those pieces can jump, and some only jump under a certain number of spaces. So very complex set of rules. It's not like your typical chess game where this piece always does this. Or um, I think some um, in the 17-piece variation, certain pieces um, change the behavior of the pieces next to them. So yeah. You need it, otherwise it's just going to be, you know... Yeah. <laughs> that was why I was curious. <laughs> yeah. That game has been solved, actually, not by me, but that's a lot more popular, so people actually want to attack it. Yes, yes. Um, well, but the problem with the genetic algorithms is how do you define rules, though? That That's yeah, kind of very hard. You can define, a, you can define a, a small, like, assembly language that can be encoded in a genetic algorithm that does, like, if the piece adjacent is this, or you may only move in, in, in places that, that match this bit mask adjacently or something. Like, you can do it. But so define it in code. Yeah, yeah, you're not going to get any possible program out of it. But, <laughs> but another thing I would like is for the game to be easy to understand, but hard to play correctly, you well. know? Yeah. So that's kind of a tough balance. I think I think Gafu Shogi did a pretty good job at hitting that balance because um, it didn't have those crazy, you know, what piece is next to me or um, Nano Shogi. Um, well, it has this rotation. I mean, I I'll probably work on um, the next thing I'll probably work on is um, how I can um, change what pieces promote to what to increase the complexity as much as I can and then go from there. So actually, you could include that as well. Including the fitness function, the computer tries to teach the game to a three-year-old. And if they can play it, then it's <laughs> easy enough to learn and has that thing. <laughs>
You know, you know how they say a minute to learn, a lifetime to master. That's that's something I want to create. I think that'd be very interesting. If if we can ex extremify it and they'll make it so easy to learn and having like made in a hundred or three hundred, that that'd be very interesting to me. And I'm dying to see what the what a very complex chess position would be like, a made in ten thousand or something. I'm just dying to see what that would look like. That I don't know why, but given what I saw in that graph of um, of um, how many moves um, until um, checkmate, I suspect that um, just going from two to three. Um, the graph be being um, stretched out like that. I suspect that if you go to 8x8 Western Chess or 9x9 Chogi, um, it's going to stretch very, very far, and you're going to have a mate in 10,000. So, of course, finding it, that's going to be another thing. So, And it's probably going to take the multiple numbers of universes we just <laughs> talked about, <laughs> unfortunately. Uh, on the graph, This is Gafu Shogi. It could be because Gafu Shogi involves rotating the pieces. There could be parity issues for how many times the pieces need to come around before something interesting happens. So I didn't look at those positions because there's hundreds, thousands of them. So. Oh, sure. It just seems odd that it's, a, it's not a smooth curve per se. It just bounces around a lot. Well, the um, even an odd bouncing is because of obviously the change the, the change in the turn white black white black. Um, the dip in the middle, I'm guessing, is because of the rotation. It takes four moves to rotate, and then your opponent also has four moves, so it's eight moves, and that length does seem to be around the order of eight, so that, that would be my best guess. Thank you.